Our meditation for tonight focuses on Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 15. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Betrayal. When you hear that word, what do you think of? Maybe you think of someone in your life who stabbed you in the back. A friend who promised that they would always be there for you, but then they wouldn't even acknowledge you when you hit rock bottom. Maybe you think of some of the greatest betrayals in history, like American General Benedict Arnold, who turned his back on America during the Revolutionary War and fled to England. Or maybe you think of some of the betrayals in your favorite books or movies, like Anakin Skywalker, who betrayed the Jedi Order, the light side, by becoming the thing he was supposed to destroy. A Sith Lord, Darth Vader, the leader of the dark side. All of these betrayals are painful in their own right, but none of them can top the most awful betrayal in all of history, when Adam and Eve betrayed God. When God created Adam and Eve, they were perfectly conformed to his will. The sides were set. Everything was good. All of creation was on God's side. But then enter Satan disguised as a serpent. He too had been on God's side at one point, until he decided to make himself God's enemy. He turned from good to evil, from holiness to sin. And as God's enemy, he hated everyone who was on God's side, Adam and Eve included. He couldn't stand the fact that they got to enjoy perfection with God, and he wanted to ruin it. So being the master deceiver, he tempts Eve. Just eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the one tree God told them not to eat from. You won't die, per se. And that little temptation was just enough. Eve willingly left God's side and joined the devil as an enemy of God. And she didn't go on her own. Adam went right along with her. The sides were set. But Adam and Eve betrayed God by abandoning his side. And this great betrayal, it isn't anywhere close to being done. We play a very similar part in betraying God every day. Believers are on God's side, right? That means we do what God wants, right? Not exactly. Satan, still a crafty enemy, lures us back to his side every day. Join in that gossip about your classmate. That way you'll fit in and be more popular. Look at that person and think about them sexually. It's not hurting them, it's just making you feel good. You can make a joke or two about President Biden. Everybody else is doing it. And every time we listen to that temptation, every time we sin, we walk right across that battlefield, straight into enemy lines. What happens to defectors like that? Well, let's go back to some of the examples from earlier. You stop hanging out with and confiding in that person who used to be your closest friend. Benedict Arnold, he tried to right his wrongs, but no one trusted him anymore. Anakin Skywalker realized his wrong and he saved his son's life, but it cost him his own life. It's hard, if not impossible, to come back from betrayal because there are always consequences. So what should God do to us? It would make all the sense in the world if God wrote us off and said, fine, you want to be against me? Go right ahead. That's what I would do. But of course, God doesn't do what we expect. Instead of letting us stay on that side, God reminds us that the devil and his offspring, they aren't our friends, but our foes. God shakes some sense into us 
Hey, look around you. You're on the wrong side. Come back to my side. God doesn't want us to be his enemies. The real enemy is that ancient serpent called the devil who leads the whole world astray. He wants to trick you into thinking that his side is best. That his side will bring you true fulfillment. That his side is victorious. But the devil's side, the enemies of God, they're already defeated. God told the devil, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. That wasn't a prediction. That was fact. Sure, Satan would strike Jesus' heel when he died on the cross. But an injury to the heel is a minor inconvenience, not a fatal blow. Jesus crushed his head. That sounds like complete victory. And from that very moment in the garden, God made sure that everyone would know Satan was already defeated. He told that snake, the devil, you will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Not exactly a glorious existence. Eating dust, crawling on your belly, those are signs of defeat. And so now every time you see a snake, you can remember, yeah, the devil's been defeated. God has set the sides. He didn't put you on the devil's side that leads to death and defeat, but he put you on his side as the offspring of the woman. This is the victorious side, the side that is led by Jesus, the serpent crusher. And just like a chicken with its head cut off still runs around, Satan is still running around trying to bring us back to his side, but he's already defeated. Like Pastor said this past Sunday, the devil is now trying to get you to despair over your sins. But the truth is this. Through Jesus, you have been forgiven for all of the times that you betray God. And now, to prevent further betrayal, God places a buffer between the two sides. God creates enmity between us, his children, and the devil. A healthy hatred of everything that is evil and sinful. Because God loves us, he doesn't want us to keep hurting ourselves by going back to the devil again and again. When a parent sees their child about to touch the hot stove, they don't let them do it. They stop their child and explain to them why they shouldn't do it. That stove might look really fun, but it's only going to hurt you. That sin, it may look like a good time, but God exposes it for what it really is. He teaches us how dangerous it is. He teaches us to hate it. For the rest of our lives, we have to live through this battle of temptation. The devil still enticing us to come to his side, to join him. And there are going to be times that we lose this battle. Times when we touch that hot stove and it's going to be an exhausting fight. But God will continue to protect you. To call you back to his side. And so now you just look forward to that day when Jesus' victory is made complete. When all of us, as the body of Christ, crush Satan under our heel when we are made perfect in heaven. The battle over. The victor's crown given to all those whom God has called to his side. This great battle over our souls between God and the devil is going to be a long one. But God didn't leave us on the wrong side. He stepped in right at that very first betrayal to bring Adam and Eve back to his side. And now, you and I are on God's side. The side that has victory through Jesus. So don't wander back to the enemy. But rally to Jesus, our warrior in the fight. The sides are set. And God made sure that you are on his side. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding Guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus.